Welcome back to the Rules of Engagement. Before we jump into our third segment, let me remind you guys, if you're interested in game design or working in the esports industry, go ahead and check out Full Sail University. Go to www.fullsail.edu slash MLG to get more information on their programs, 3D animation, video production, uh, audio engineering, game design, all these cool different uh, basically tools and, and, and skill sets you need to get that career in the game design or esports industry. Go ahead and check it out if you're thinking of going that direction. It's always good to get more information on potential future opportunities. On to our third segment of the day. It's going to be a TVT between Xenocider and Major. We're going to talk about standard TVT openings. We're going to talk about key positions on Whirlwind. Then we're going to talk about proper contains and, and how to execute a contain properly uh, and, and maximize the value you get out of it. So we're going to start off uh, this game, the six minute mark, talking about standard TVT. Uh, and the way TVT works uh, is in the opening, right, you don't have a whole ton of money. You have the one base. And so if you don't have a whole ton of money, it's less about creating this sick army, and it's more about getting your, your natural expansion, defending harass, and executing harass. Because Terran has all these, like, like one unit wonder type things, where, like, uh, one unit can do so much. Like one Banshee has a potential to do a lot of damage. It has a lot of harass, and it's not very expensive. Uh, of course, in a, in a giant battle, Banshees may not be that great. But in, in early game, uh, one by one, they're great. Reapers can be great. A Hellion drop. So all these things that aren't great in a major battle, but when you know there's not going to be a major battle in the early game, focus on constantly macroing, getting those expansions up, getting the worker production going on, as well as the harassment game. It's all about the harassment game. So. Make sure you can defend your opponent's harass and deal with those hellings without too much of a problem. And then also try to get the most out of your own harass with that uh, with that banshee go. Wherever that banshee went. Here it is. Uh, try to get the most out of your own harass. Whatever ability you choose, there's a lot of builds out there. Watch your favorite Terran stream. Figure out what they're doing. Um, and, and, and then just you know you use that build and focus on executing the harass and macroing perfectly. Once you get in a situation where both players, uh, we'll fast forward this a bit. Both players pretty much have Stabilize all their expansions, their defenses up, their harass techniques aren't going to work unless they move out and like a counterattack thing more than an actual harass. Um, you know, they, they've got a uh, missile turret, of course, defending bases from the Banshees, or they've got a uh, tank and a, a wooden mine at the front, so you can't do Hellion harass. Basically, once everyone's stabilized, now it's in the time where, okay, I've got economy, now it's going to come down to building a good army composition. So it's very important to focus on the upgrades. Get those upgrades as fast as you can. Uh, at least if you're going bio. For mechas, it's not quite as important. And then make sure that you're developing an army that's good in combat, right? So if it's Hellbat tank, if it's uh, marine tank, medevac, you know, whichever composition you want to go for, um, well, whichever it is, it's probably medevac. And if you have help, either it's medevac, Hellbat tank, or, or medevac, marine tank for the most part. So one of those two combinations, just go for that. Um, you know, if, if you see them going too much mech, you can add in marauders as well. Uh, and just focus on the upgrades, focus on developing your army. You can see both players kind of stopped harass in this mid part of the game. And the reason why? Well, it's not going to work at this point. Right? It'll work early because nobody has many units. It'll work once the action starts going on, which is why Major is starting to do it now. Like he's hoping, okay, an engagement will happen, something will distract my opponent, his units won't be in position. But if they're just sitting around macroing on, on two to three bases and they're not moving out, their harassment's not going to work. So that's when you always focus on establishing your army, macroing up. And, and preparing for the, the larger scale engagements. So we can see here Major, of course, is trying to drop in. This is at a point a little bit too early. I, I'm not sure there's enough going on. There's a little bit of positioning in the middle. I think a, a couple of Hellions walk by there, but not quite enough to expect it to work when your opponent has a sensor tower. And so he gets punished pretty badly for that, losing. Uh, he lost some medevac and uh, 16 Marines, which is a pretty big deal. Now we can see if he actually might lose a second medevac as well. You can see Xenocider has a nice supply advantage. He's trying to figure out a way to use that. Trying to be a little bit fancy on his own, that didn't work out either, so he's kind of evening up the score a bit there. Um, but he's still, he's in a situation where, okay, maybe he can control the middle of the map because Major sent his early units to, to do the draw play instead of the map. And one thing that's really important about this map, let me talk briefly about it before we get into the rest of the game. Uh, I think it's pretty important. Every map has a couple key positions. And Whirlwind and TVT was super important. We noticed this in Flash vs. Innovation as well um, from the MLG Winning Championships, but Whoever controls the middle, this middle location, has a very, very nice advantage. And the reason why, uh, not just, oh, they have to walk around me, but it's incredibly easy, or it's incredibly hard, I should say, for your opponent to take a fourth base. And the reason why is, is it's this simple. If you control the middle, if your opponent, you, you can threaten moving this way, right, and sieging up here, or you can threaten moving this way, right, and sieging up here. 
If you get into one of these two locations, your opponent cannot defend the three bases. They can't. Uh, at least not. Maybe they can do it for 30 seconds, but in the long run, if you control this location, they can't reinforce easy. They have to use medevacs. You can just attack whichever section is, is, is weaker. If you get into this position, that means your siege tanks control this zone right here. Uh, and actually, they can even hit the, uh, the command center as well. So either way, they can't let you get there. The only way they can stop you from getting to either of these locations, their army. Let me actually erase this stuff right here. Their army, your opponent's army, if they wanted to stop you from getting to these two locations, they have to be back here. They can't be anywhere but back here. Because if they're out, if they're out moving one way around the edge, you go the other way, you get in position, and they're screwed. Uh, so they have to be back here to react whichever way you go. That's the only way they, they, they can ever defend the three bases. And if they're back here, how can they take a fourth base? Right? They try to take this one, right? You can just go this way. Right? It's very, very difficult for them to hold four bases if you hold the middle. Super, super, super important spot on Whirlwind. Of course, once they get a huge tank line, like uh, you see like Mech vs. Bio, sometimes that'll happen. Then they can have two armies, right? They can have the army there, and then they can also have an army here. Right? And then they'll have missile turrets, you know, over here and stuff, and over here, and missile turrets down here. And so eventually they can, they can take a fourth, but it's, it takes them a long time. They have to wait till they have a lot of units, enough units so that they have big enough tank lines that they can split their army into pieces and, and still defend multiple locations, which doesn't happen until the, the later parts of the mid-game. So middle, super important on Whirlwind for those reasons. And what we can see here is Xenocider has that, that middle position right now. And because he has this middle position, he can do those threatening movements. Um, and he's giving up the middle for reasons unknown. I think he was hoping there'd be a base here. Um, it, it was a situation where I don't really know if he's giving it up because it would have been hard for Major to take it without letting him get this position. So it was more like he was testing Major, seeing if he could um, sneak in and, and, and take the magic position. But now, remember what I said. If he's in the middle, right, if your opponent tries to walk around this way, you can just juke down here and get this position right here. If you get this position right here, you control this ramp, and you can, of course, uh, if you control this ramp, that means you can then kill the, the command center. So this is why the middle is so important. When Major comes this way, right, what does the Inside have to do? Well, first thing to make sure he doesn't die, and then he can just head straight south, right? Boom, head straight south this way. And because Major was out on the map, he either had to try to go through the army, but then Xenocider could siege up, push him back, then continue on the way. He'd have to try to do a base trade where he's, he's, he's you know, would be way behind because Xenocider would have plenty of time to prepare for the base trade where his major's bases would already be attacked. Or he has to try to beat Xenocider back to this key position, and unfortunately he's just like a hair too slow. Right, he's just a hair too slow to, to beat him back to this key position, and, and the, the tanks are able to take out all these... Uh, all these Marines, and basically that's that's the third base, right? And now Major's in a really bad spot. Now here's what's interesting. At this exact moment, what happens? Zenith Sider has basically, uh, it's not a strong contain, but it's a pseudo contain going. Major can't move his army out, or Zenith Sider will just push forward and kill the natural. Major has a very hard time taking the third base. Uh, well, he lost the third base, so he'd have to try to take the third base over on the far left side. If he takes the third base on the far left side of the map, then of course, he has to try to both stop Xenocider's army from coming in that direction and defend the far left side, which is going to be very difficult. So he's stuck in a, in a tough contained situation. If you ever are, are containing your opponent, it's kind of like you're, you're choking them out in, in something, right? Focus on the contain. Don't, don't do fancy moves. You don't have to do some crazy risky plays. Uh, just be patient and wait for them to tap out. Focus on the contain. Make sure it's solid and slowly tighten it up. If you try to, if you're choking someone out and then you try to do some fancy, like flip them around and start punching them too, what's going to happen? You're going to loosen up your grip, they're going to escape the contain, and all of a sudden you're going to be in a tough spot. So, from here, Xenocider wants to play slowly and patiently. Unfortunately, uh, he's smelling blood. He's like a shark. He's like, I think Major's weak, man. I'm going to go get him. So he tries this drop play, tries to be fancy. Unfortunately, Major isn't quite as weak as Xenocider thought he was. He's got enough units back here. He can respond to be able to drop, right? And then once he responds to the old, oops, sorry. As he responds to the old drop, he just picked up all his units, dropped on Major's tanks, or Xenocider's tanks, excuse me, and he can break this contain as well. So all of a sudden the contain's broken, and, and it, was, it was basically a sacrifice. The contain was sacrificed to get this drop to do a lot of damage, but the drop didn't do much damage either. So if you have a contain, I wouldn't sacrifice it to a drop because maybe the drop can do great, maybe it can't, but you know the contain is going to do great, so why sacrifice that position? Uh, you make sure you make sure you're you're a little bit more patient. Okay, is my contain secure? I think I'm good. 
I, I, I can afford to send one or two medevacs away, so I'll send those guys away and do some drop play. But make sure that contain is stabilized and defended before you try that. So now, of course, the Major has the army advantage right now, and he's going to do the same thing. He says, okay, I have an army advantage. I'll take the middle. I'll push forward. My opponents, of course, uh, he has to be, remember, I said he has to be back here to defend both the spots. He's not back there, so I'll just go up here and, and, and take out the spot. Um, this time, Xenocider is kind of able to get their Major. Um, couldn't get the Marines up top to let the tanks get up top um, quite fast enough. So Xenocider pseudo is trying to defend this, but it's still very difficult. Um, it wasn't as bad as the position Major was in, but it's still a rough spot. And this time, Major has, okay, I'm in a good spot. I've delayed his third base. I've got a, a kind of like a pseudo contain going on. I, I can kill this. Of course, he may have this base down here, but meanwhile, I'll be on four bases, right? Because I, I'm taking the fourth. So what does he do? This is how, how uh, the ideal way to play the contain. Instead of trying to get too crazy, play it patient. Make sure you know where their army is. Make sure you, you, you stabilize the position over here. You, you, you got that in choked out. You tighten up somewhere else, right? It's, it's an anaconda technique. You just no hurry, right? The time is 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 not against you, right? You're you're base up, right? If they do some nice draw play like this, that can be annoying. You can use a lot of units, but as long as you can hold the contain, you're in good shape. Remember how I talked about how hard it is to hold a fourth uh, if they had the middle, and this is why. It's because they can easily move here. When you move to defend, they can just then come around on the left side very easy as well. It's it's, it's difficult to keep up with the movements. Of, of the player as they contain. So we're just going to watch this on a, on a little faster speed. Major, okay, you're going to move your units over here to defend. I'm going to then, sorry, I'm going to then push up over here, see if I can I can establish this position. Another very important one. Zenith Sider, of course, he doesn't quite have enough Marines. He has to go uh, worry about the break over here, and that's going to allow Major, as soon as he decides to, you can just push up. Come on, Major, there you go. You can push up here and take this position. And now once he has this position, what's he going to do? Is he going to try to grab all his units? And, and go charge? No, he's not. He's just going to sit here. He's just going to sit here and say, okay, there's no way with me having this position you can ever get past three bases, right? You're never going to take this base. Uh, this base you can have, but I'll just have four bases and, and you'll starve out. So he's going to sit here and be patient, right? If you notice, he actually picked one medevac or two medevac full of guys to, to see if there was a drop opportunity, but he made sure there's enough Marines left on this tank position so that Xenocider couldn't break it uh, with, with, with using a Marine drop. And so for the rest of this, this game's over here. But we're going to do, we're going to just watch it on, on the fast speed. We're just going to see what's happening. How does Zenith Sider get out of this? Well, he can either hope Major screws up and, and loosens the grip or tries to get fancy, or he has to come up with a very creative way to try to break his attack. And so going forward, what is Zenith Sider's creative way going to be? Well, what he's going to do is he's going to try to drop a bunch of units over here and instead of a flank on this force. And that's not a bad idea, right? He was able to break part of the contain, but in doing so, unfortunately, he, he burned up enough units that now Major is strong enough uh, to just basically overrun him right here. And as he overruns him, uh, he's, he's going to lose the game. So that's it. Uh, what's really cool there is, is basically this game. is It started out, you know, focusing on the macro in the beginning, getting the early game going on, and then understanding the key positions of Whirlwind. Zenith Sider used that middle to get a great contain, but it's really all about the contains themselves, right? Be slow and patient when you have that contain. You don't need to do... Uh, don't need to do crazy risks, right? If you know the key map positions and, and you know you're ahead because you've, you've manipulated the map to your advantage, don't take crazy risks. Just be very slow but sure with your contain. Exactly what Major it made you. It took Major seven minutes from reset the contain to when you won, but you know what he won. And that's what it's about. You, you, have, you have the contain, just say, okay, he's on three base, I'm on four. Just solidify the contain. Keep making more solid, more and more solid. Add a bunch of sensor towers uh, everywhere. In fact, if we jump back in this game, um, if you look at Major's vision, he's got like sensor vision basically around the whole map, right? He's got perfect, perfect map vision with those sensor towers. So keep uh, keep those sensor towers up so you can't be counterattacked, and just wait for them to lose. You don't have to be fancy. Don't take risks. Proper contain will win you the game if you just keep it going. Traps up our third segment, Rules of Engagement. We'll uh, take a short break and be on to the Q&A.